Thank you for joining Vast Voice, vastsolutionsgroup.com. You know what we do? We do tax finance and artificial intelligence to help small business owners, entrepreneurs to lower their taxes and prepare for retirement, all using artificial intelligence, new fangled machine learning. This is going to be the rage as time goes on. Today, we're going to be talking about enterprise risk captives. A lot of people are now talking about them. What are they? Well, luckily in our second season, episode three, you're going to learn exactly how you can use them to better yourself as an entrepreneur, to lower risk, to lower taxes, to customize certain types of products that can help you lower your risk. A captive is an insurance company that requires the risk of an affiliated business or even a group. Captives have long been used as an alternative to conventional insurance for a business that chooses to, well, self-insure. More recently, captives are used to reduce risk not covered by conventional insurance policies such as deductibles, policy exclusions, coverage that is unavailable or exceedingly expensive in the conventional marketplace. Or you can even cover, cover other risks retained by that business. Again, these are all called captives or to be specific, enterprise risk captives. Let's talk about what are the benefits of these things called captives or sometimes they're called 831B in the marketplace. Well, number one, and this is a big one. This, I'm going to start with this one right off the bat. It's a fund for risks that are uninsurable or uneconomic to insure. Now, we're going to get in specifics of that. Basically, you have a side pot of money that is used for offsetting risk when you can't get insurance in the normal marketplace. You can improve risk management. You can reduce dependence on commercial insurance when it's not out there or hard to find. Create new profitable businesses. We're going to get into that. Customize insurance coverage, as I mentioned. Key employees can participate in captive ownership, which makes it pretty darn nice. You know, what's a, Who's a good captive candidate? And you can make, uh, let's say, $15 million or more in annual revenue. Sometimes it could go as low as $10 million, but typically it's really $15 million of annual revenue. Have significant uninsured risk, usually 25 or more employees, or experience uninsured losses of maybe $100,000 or more, sometimes as low as $75,000 or more annually, or spend $200,000 or more in property and casualty insurance premiums. Or also, you can sell warranties, people who sell warranties or service contracts to customers. That's becoming a big, big marketplace now. So about captive tax issues. Certain issues should be discussed with your advisor before forming a captive, by the way. For example, there, there are IRS safe harbor structures that involve insuring a large number of entities or participating in a risk pool. If the captive qualifies for insurance company status, or 831B status, depending, the business can recognize the tax deduction when the premium is paid to the captive. Compare this to the self-insurance model where the deduction is realized only upon payment of a loss. Not good. Further, a small captive can potentially build up underwriting profits on a tax-deferred basis if annual premiums do not exceed potentially $2.2 million. Um, now, <clears throat> it, you know, and it's an industry that's saying, well, if you've seen one, you've seen all. Nah, it's not that's not the case. Some people believe that, but no, it's not the case. But let's go over some of the specific reasons. So um, re you can reduce insurance costs because you have underwriting profit potentially. So that could really help a small business owner. Also, you get greater control over claims. You can increase coverage, increase uh, capacity for underwriting, underwriting flexibility, by the way, access for insurance market incentives for loss control, and you, plus you could track cost of risk. A lot of times you can't do that as an entrepreneur. Uh, also for asset protection purposes, to a certain extent, it, it reserves for, you can reserve for unexpected losses, mitigate shock losses, as they call them, manage consolidated cost. Um, also, let's also mention, you know, you get to retain premium dollars. Ta so there's tax benefits, investment income, Etc. So it's really, it truly can be an, uh, an additional profit center to your existing business. So let's go over some of the examples. A lot of people are asking nowadays us when they call in the office because we're getting a lot of calls about captives. Well, what are some examples of captives? Let's go over that. So, you know, a large property owner forms a captive to increase and in insure deductible layer of property insurance coverage, as an example. Just got a call about that last week. Manufacturer forms a captive to transfer risk not covered 
by a standard general liability policy. Uh, a client a while back, uh, or actually a new client a while back, wanted to cover their risks that were not covered in a general liability policy, and we suggested a captive, and then he can he was going to be able to write a million dollar premium, thereby get a deduction of that full one million dollars. Um, large business with high deductible workers comp programs participates in RTEX in uh, in such policies, as a matter of fact, in captives. An employer with a hundred employees forms a captive to ensure a medical stop loss risk as part of a self insured health program. We just are in the process of starting one of those up at vastsolutionsgroup.com. Um, a contractor, this also, I'm trying to think of, you know, newer clients that are starting captives, or I should say clients who are starting newer captives. A contractor forms a, a captive to cover performance risk, construction de defect, and also warranty risk. One specifically on, he put a bunch of appliances in his uh, new apartment buildings. He wanted to cover the uh, defects or warranty risks. Um, thereby, he ended up getting, a, instead of writing a check to whatever, ABC, a property and casualty company, he is in the process of forming his own captive, he will be able to pick up that revenue versus having that premium check walk out the door. Uh, how about a business with a specific exposure not available at a reasonable price in the market? So meaning he would start or she would start a captive to cover the first layer of those risks, then obtain reinsurance for the excess. So you're covered. There's an expense, but you're covered, and that's exactly what you'd want by putting together a captive in that circumstance. Um, oh, um, uh, another client that um, recently popped up, you know, relatively large business, formed it or in the process of forming a captive uh, to cover the, a deductible layer of numerous lines of coverage, therefore, therefore reducing insurance costs and improving its cash flow. Um, he was having uh, a lot of deductibles um, go out the door, uh, meaning <laughs> cash from his pocket, as an example, and he wanted to make sure that that was covered, and so he's putting together a captive. Uh, as, a, as a means of stopping that process of cash going out the door for his deductible. Now, you know, what's truly the advantage in, 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 in summary? You know, you can provide a, a lot of risk mitigation strategies in captives, and that's really, that's really the key. Uh, that's number one. And number two, tax deduction. Why wouldn't you want to take why wouldn't you want to take uh, advantage of uh, of taxes and tax mitigate when you can put together a captive, get a tax deduction, not have to worry about risk? All good things. You know, these are complex. You have to talk to a professional. We've been doing these for a while. Talk to anyone. We can be a, uh, sometimes we consult with captive managers to help them get going in the process or if you need help putting together a captive, give us a call. Once again, this is Kenneth French talking about Issues relating to entrepreneurs, small business owners who are fighting in today's ever-increasing world. That's what we're here to do. Help lower taxes, help retirement, all utilizing forward-thinking artificial intelligence as a means to do the above. Once again, Kenner French, thank you very much for taking the time.